This is going to be the closest thing in all the references that I've seen that you can say, well, here's a reference where it's not talking about worship. But I still think it is, but it's, it doesn't use the word worship. But we'll see. You know, I, I don't shy away from, from passages like this because the truth fears no scrutiny. Right? right? And, and I shouldn't have to be like, oh, man, well, that's not going to look really good for my, you know, and, and just, just not, just ignore that. Right? It's like, like the people who want to focus on James chapter 2 and say, see, look, you got, you, it's not faith alone. They're not going to turn to any of the hundreds of verses that talk about faith alone being the requirement for salvation, right? Because it's not, that's not going to that's not going to go well for their for their sermon. Yeah. But if you're interested in the truth, you have to cover everything, right? To make sure you get a proper understanding and make sure you're not getting off uh, into an area that is false doctrine, yeah. right? And of all of the areas, that's why I said this is this is probably the closest. Now this still. One passage would not negate all of the others that we saw. But let's just let's look at the verse. You'll know what I'm talking about here in just a second. Look at verse number 14. Because this is also a summary of all these of all the different commandments that were already given, by the way, of like cursings coming upon people who do this and this and this and this and this. So this is not the the larger portion of scripture. This is more of a synopsis of what has already been covered in the law. But let's read this anyways. Verse 14, the Bible says, And the Levite shall speak and say unto all the men of Israel with a loud voice, Cursed be the man that maketh any graven or molten image, an abomination unto the Lord, the work of the hands of the craftsmen, and putteth it in a secret place. And all the people shall answer and say, Amen. So there's the statement, right? Well, just curses anyone who makes his great, you know. Well, it doesn't say to bow down and worship. But you know what it does say? To put it in a secret place. Why would you put an object in a secret place and hide it unless it's for this intended purpose of worshiping, especially given the context of everything. So you see what I'm saying? You could find this one passage and be like, well, it doesn't say you have to, you know, you, you know bow down and worship it, but it's talking about the secret place. You know, it's not, it's, not it's not just anything. And it's definitely not some clear verse just saying, nope, absolutely, you just can't make any image of anything. You can't take a photograph, you can't do, you can't make a painting of the sunset because that's the host of heaven and, you know, that's ridiculous. But I understand people who come from a spirit and a heart of wanting to serve God because that is appropriate, of wanting to be right with God. But I'm teaching these things so that we can be confident in what we believe and understanding what the Bible is teaching. Now turn, if you would, to Second Chronicles chapter number 3. We're going to look at a couple examples here of images that are created that are not considered idols and are not in contradiction to what the Bible says as being um, you know, the, against the, the, the second commandment, right, of, of the Ten Commandments. Now, you, you, know, you can make the argument and say, well, God told them to do this. Therefore, it's not breaking the commandments. I understand that, but I, I don't see that God would also leave any confusion about the law of instructing people to do something that is literally contrary to the law. I mean, that doesn't make any sense to me. Just because people like to use that argument, well, well, Jesus could, you know, people will say when people get saved, like the thief on the cross. I've, I've had people say this to me before. People believe that you have to be baptized to be saved. Well, Jesus, Jesus could save whoever he wants to save. Well, yeah, I mean, technically God could do whatever he wants to do, right? But he doesn't make the rules different for people and just go outside and just be like, well, for everyone else, you have to be baptized to be saved, but not for this guy. I like this guy. I mean, I like him more than I like everyone else. I like him more than the other guy that dies without getting baptized, even though he put his faith in me. I just, I just have a preference for him. So I'm going to save him. That's ridiculous. Right? God, God's consistent with the rules. They apply to everyone equally. Right? It's not special treatment for different people on, on how God's law is going to work or, or how a person is going to get saved. Right? It's going to apply the same. That's, that, that only makes sense. I mean, 
Otherwise, otherwise, if that wasn't the case, you could literally just kind of make up whatever you want about the Bible and believe whatever because you don't have any real solid foundation. 